Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're gonna create this alien slime effect with X particles. So, it was Independence Day this week, and World UFO Day, which I didn't even know was a thing. So I thought, this week, let's do something alien, and I decided to go with slime. So here we go. Let's start, as usual, by setting up the scene. Let's make it 1920 by 1080, and 24 frames a second. We'll hit Control D on the keyboard and bring up our project settings, and we'll change the frames per second here to 24 as well. Okay, let's go up here and bring in a plane for our slime to grow on. Let's make it nice and big. We'll make it roughly 3600 in the width and height. Let's go up to display and turn on our lines. And we'll crank our segments up to about 30 each. We wanna make the ground kind of bumpy. So let's come over to create and deformer and we'll add in a displacer. Make sure you hold alt when you click so it becomes a child of our plane. Let's come over to the shading tab of our displacer and we'll click on the shader arrow and add some noise. Let's click into the noise and we'll bring that global scale up nice and high. Then we'll go back to the object tab and let's set our height at 240 centimeters. Okay, now we've got our bumpy terrain. That grid's a bit distracting. Let's go up to filter and turn that off. We should probably smooth our landscape out a bit. Let's grab our plane and holding shift, we'll bring in a subdivision surface. Holding shift should make it apparent and apply that straight away as you can see. Right, it's time to bring in an X particle system. Let's go up here and click on XP system. First things first, let's click on emitters and bring in an emitter. If we hit play, you'll see that the particles are emitting to the side, but we don't want that. Let's change emitter plane to positive Y and we'll give that a go. Perfect. Let's change the H angle to 90 degrees and play that back. So now the particles are shooting out to the sides as well. Let's go up to the emission tab and bring the max particles down to 100. So this is a bit easier to work with. And while we're at it, we'll bring birth rate down to 200 and variation to 200 as well. Let's play that back. And now we have our 100 particles shooting off in different directions. The next thing we wanna do is make these particles stick to the ground. So let's come up to modifiers and under motion modifiers, let's choose follow surface. We'll have to tell X particles which surface we want the particles to follow. So let's come up and drag our subdivision surface into the object section. And if we play that back and spin around a little bit so we can see what's happening, you'll notice that our particles aren't sticking to the surface at all, but that's easy to fix. All we have to do is increase the distance in the follow surface. Let's crank it up to about 347 and give that a go. All right, now that we've got them crawling along the surface, we need to give them some trails. Let's come up here and click generators and we will select a trails generator. We need to apply our emitter. So let's grab that guy and drag him in here. And let's play that back. Oh, we're definitely getting there. These lines are all a bit too uniform at the moment. We wanna get some variation in there. So let's come up here and add a turbulence. You can find that under modifiers and motion modifiers. So straight off the bat, that's gonna make things look a bit more organic, but I don't like the way that the particles are only going in two directions. I want them to sort of fan out and spread everywhere, like an alien virus. Let's quickly go back to our emitter and under the object tab, we changed our H angle before, but we forgot to change the V angle. Let's make that 90 degrees as well. And we'll play that back. Now that's looking a bit more like alien tendrils. Cool, let's switch our display to shading so you can get a better look at that. I think we can make this look a bit more interesting. I think it would be cool if the tendrils sort of branch off as they grow out of this big alien mass. Right now we've just got these individual strands, but if we come up to modifiers and down where it says generate modifiers, we'll bring in a XP branch. Then we'll need to come down here and add a branch object. Let's go over here and add a little bit of variation. We'll just say four. And we want the bending of the branch to be a bit more extreme than five degrees. Let's bring that up to 24 degrees. And we'll play that back. Now you can see our trails are a bit more sporadic. We've got them bending off in different directions now. 
And if we go back up to our XP branch, we can make this effect a bit more extreme. If we play around with the max bend deviation, we should get some pretty interesting results. Let's hit play and see how this works. The more we raise this, the crazier it's gonna look. It really depends what you're going for. But for our alien slime, I think we'll just leave that at five for now. Okay, let's go down to the timeline and give ourselves a few more frames to play with. 500 should do us. But you might notice now that our slime stops growing at frame 72. Well, you want it to keep on growing, so let's go back up to the XP branch. And where it says max time, let's crank that up to the seed length, in this case 500 frames. And we'll do the same for minimum time. Let's also go back to our sub branch and we'll do the same for max length and min length. And if we play that back, you'll see that our slime keeps on growing and sort of takes over the scene there. All right, we've got the animation sorted out now. Let's turn our particles into geometry so we can render this bad boy. Let's pause that. And if we come up to generators this time, let's bring in a skinner and we'll need to tell it what to skin. So we'll need to choose a source object. Let's grab our XP trail and drag that in here and we'll give that a second to think. Okay, our slime's looking a bit too chunky there. So let's bring our surface level down to 4%. And that's looking a bit better already. Let's also bring the polygon size down to five centimeters and let it do its calculation there. It might take quite a while because there's gonna be a lot of geometry now. Okay, there we go. Let's also bring that custom radius down to zero. Okay, it's still looking a bit bumpy, but if we come down to smoothing and turn on geometry, and again, give it some time to think, it'll eventually give you this pretty cool effect. Let's give that a quick render. Looking cool. Let's throw on a quick green material. Something like that. And we'll drag that onto our Skinner and give that another quick render. Our alien slime is coming along nicely. If you decide you want to change your particle simulation, it's probably a good idea to turn off the XP Skinner and just let that play through and then switch it back on again. Because all that extra geometry is probably going to be pretty hard on your computer. If we give it a try, you can see it is running very slow. And as the geometry count builds, it'll just get slower and slower. One last thing, when you go to render this, you'll probably want to cache the particles. Otherwise you might run into some issues. That's super easy to do with X particles. You just want to come up and under other objects, add an XP cache. Just set the location you want to store the cache over here and hit build cache and you're good to go. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As always, if you want to download the project file, there's a link below to save you a bit of time and you can get a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.